live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE, covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back, Mario Angers is here. He's the Senior Manager of Systems at the University of British Columbia. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you, thank you. So how's Veeam on going? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, it's, it's fabulous actually. I, I love the event because it's, it's not so big that you can't you know talk to a lot of people and it's you know and it's you know small enough that you know you get to know a lot of different folks right yeah, so it feels bigger you know they're saying the number is 3000 it yep. feels bigger than that to me but at the same time it is kind of intimate yeah yeah yeah. yeah no this is uh, i went to their first event so certainly this is very different than what it was like you know i think their first event was 2014 so yeah yeah it's very good so tell us what's going on up at uh, British Columbia. What do you, what you, what's hot these days for you? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I spoke to this a little bit yesterday during the partner session, right? So uh, British Columbia is a bit in a bit of a unique position because we have laws that prevent us from storing data outside Canada, right? So up until recently, um, you know, we didn't have any of the large service providers. So we had to basically, to some degree, reinvent the wheel. Right, so if we wanted to provide or consume cloud, we had to basically build it, which is what, you know, the University of British Columbia did a few years ago. And because we're the largest in BC, we were doing it at scale already. So um, we were approached by um, an organization inside British Columbia called BCNet, which basically services all the other higher ed. And they asked us if we wanted to provide cloud services to the community. And we've been doing this for almost three years now. As a partner to BC Ed. Uh, yeah, to BC yeah. Net, yeah. So oh, we're BC basically Ed, yeah. the service operator, they're the service provider, right? But we, we do everything, they take care of the marketing, the communication, the... Uh, right. And Mark, could, could you walk us through what's that stack look like? I actually, I did an interview at the OpenStack Summit with a Massachusetts higher ed yeah. cloud that they built that you know, used OpenStack as, as kind of the underlying piece. What, what, what yeah, no, so on? we went with, we're a VMware shop, yeah. right? So we went with the cloud director, right, as the front end, uh, basically, but the back end is, you know, a combination of Cisco servers, HP servers, NetApp storage, HP uh, storage, data domain for our backup. Um, of course, we use Veeam, you know, for our backup software. Um, and then it's basically VMware stack, right, end to end. Okay, great. Yeah. I, I, it was funny. The, the the gentleman that I interviewed actually actually was the one that created VCD okay. uh, when he was at okay. VMware. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just curious uh, y y your viewpoint. Um, one of the things we used to say is, cloud is not virtualization plus. Um, but I if you you know build a, sta a stack, if you can have kind of the orchestration and yeah. you know management pieces. Um, so you feel you have a cloud. What differentiates what you have today versus what you could have built you know five years ago? Uh, well, I think five years ago it would have been really challenging to provide the services um, in a self-service capability to our end users, right? So today we can do that, right? We basically, the only involvement we have is we provision a virtual data center for our end user and then it's self-service from there for them, right? Okay. We're also, we also use NSX, which is also a VMware product, right? So it's self-service end-to-end. Right. Right. And, and how has your availability become better with what you have today versus what you had before? Um, well, I mean, using Veeam, you know, Veeam is a significant partner, partner of ours, right? So we've been a Veeam customer for probably five or six years now on the backup and, um, and restore side probably about four years. And I would say it's made our jobs a lot easier, right? So. Um, historically, our legacy backup system was just a bear and a monster to manage, right? So it required a huge amount of time to not just manage, but understand how it was done. You know, with Veeam, they've really simplified that process, right? So, you know, and we have a very large environment. And we basically have one guy managing backup, right? So, so it used to be, okay, well that's pretty good productivity. So it used to be the conversation around well, we're meeting our backup in the within the window. You know that was sort of the challenge, yeah. and 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 now increasingly, it's we want to get as close as you know RPO zero as possible for certain apps. You know, not everything is too expensive, um, and we want a much faster recovery time uh, objective. So, can you talk to us? Do you, first of all, do you do you converse in those terms with your you know line of business, and have you been able to affect those metrics? Um, so. 
we're not quite there yet, right? So from a sophistication or a maturity perspective, right? So we still have a bit of a ways to go, right? Mm -hmm. To get there. Um, you know, however, can we now guarantee to our folks that we'll be able to bring workloads back in a, you know, within the service level that we have with our customers? Absolutely, mm -hmm. right? So it's we've, we can provide peace of mind now knowing that if we lose something, um, you know, we can bring it back very quickly, you know, as it's actually being restored to the production environment. So where do you right. want to go from it? It sounds like you've got the, you got the productivity thing nailed. You got one person, you know, yep. managing all this. Um, and you're able to, to meet those SLAs. Uh, what's next? You know, so I would say next for us is, so today we provide what I'll call a managed service around backup, right? So basically, the team that I manage is looking after backup for, you know, for all the, the clients within the service. So our next step is really to provide them the ability to manage that themselves, right? So we're looking to do that over the summer. You know, once we do that, then we want to start partnering with Veeam as well and start looking at their Cloud Connect product, right? Um, we, we've been in discussions for some time now about how we're going to do that, um, and that's the evolution of that. Um, so, and then building on that, um, and also, also we're being also asked to add to the portfolio of services that we provide. And one of those services is disaster recovery as a service. So that's becoming very, very critical to the province. Vancouver is basically like San Francisco or Los Angeles. We live in one of the you know, biggest fault zone in the world, right? So at some point it will happen, right? So now we've uh, basically provisioned a data center in middle of the province where it's outside your quake zone. You know, so now we can start providing those services to our, our community. We, go uh, ahead. Steve. Yeah, uh, Mark, could, could you speak to uh, the relationship of Veeam with uh, storage arrays that, that, that you sure. have? What, 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 what's the interaction there? Uh, so when we went to Veeam, it was really important that the integration, the full integration is there with the storage vendors that we had. So originally we were, um, you know, primarily in that app shop, right? So when that integration was in place. So when we started looking at um, moving off of tape and moving on to disk for backup, right? So we, we basically narrowed the list down to vendors that also fully integrated with Veeam, right? So we chose Data Domain, right? An EMC product, we've been very happy. And just recently we went to, um, to RFP and we basically selected a new vendor for virtualization storage. Right? And the same rules apply, right? Full integration needs to be in place. We need to be able to know that we're going to be able to read the data off of uh, the storage arrays and then move it to the backup, right? So, and without that integration, there's no guarantees that we can do that successfully. So, data domain customer happy with that as the that backup appliance? Yeah. Fast, great data reduction. Didn't the EMC get you in a headlock and like say you got to buy Networker and Avamar and really push? Oh, hard they tried, of course. Okay, right? and they so did what try. led to your decision to go with Veeam? Oh, the complexity of those solutions, right? So. You know, we're not going to reinvent how we're structured or how we're architected just to put a backup solution in place, right? It's just, and that was really, and if you look at some, a lot of the other big vendors in the mar marketplace today, that's basically the expectation. Is okay, well, you're, you know, you're built out like this, now you're going to have to do this in order to consume our solution. Uh, that just wasn't an option for us, and, and right? And that, so some people would say, well, I get one throat to, sh to choke and that simplifies things. You don't buy that. No, not at all. I think it keeps vendors honest if you have more than one, right? So it gives you some leverage to be able to negotiate, right? Um, you know, and to be quite honest with you, I I've, I've yet to find another vendor that provides the level of quality and support that Veeam does, right? So. You know, and they're growing as a company, and I expect that things will change to some degree, right? Because that's part of growing. However, um, so far, the experience that we've had is the same we had four years ago when they were a relatively small company. Can you give an example? Like, what, 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 um, what resonates with you as a customer in terms so, of that service experience? So I think as a, as a bunch of IT guys, right, we think we know everything, right? So when we originally acquired Veeam, we thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we get what you're telling us, but we know better than you do. So we went ahead and implemented based on what we felt was right. It wasn't right, right? So they didn't come over and say, told you so, or you know, we're not going to help you now because you decided to go this way. No, they provided us with all the support we needed in order to actually 
changed what we had done and there was never any finger pointing or any, right? It was basically, you're a partner, we're gonna help you be successful, right? And that's very rare, I think, in the industry today. Yeah, really respecting sort of yep. the, 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 the fact that you wanted to do it a certain way and yeah, they, you had to I learn. Mean, yeah, they did try to talk us out of it, and, but we decided to move in that direction anyway, right? But, you know, I, to me, it's like, yeah, it's a fantastic relationship. A anything uh, that you've seen here today or this week, the announcements that is really interesting and exciting to you? Uh, I think, up? yeah, I think a lot of the things that are coming in version 10 are going to allow us to expand on the things that we provide to our customers. Right, for example, um, you know, the, all the, the stuff they talk about around availability, right? The, you know, primarily disaster recovery stuff, right? Which is such a big thing for us, right? So I think to us, this is going to add significant value. It, right. Mario, anything, either Veeam or your, your other vendor, vendor ecosystem uh, that you're looking for that would make your life easier? You s seem to have a pretty opinionated view of what, what you need. Uh, so to me is, you know, so we're in the business of solving problem, right? So as a vendor, you're not going to help me solve my problem unless you understand what my problem is. You know, so in my experience, I'm not going to say f with all vendor, but with a lot of vendors in the past couple of years is basically, um, you know, the caliber of the salespeople I feel have changed, right? So it used to be that the sales folks w used to be pretty knowledgeable about uh, what they sold. Now it feels like all they're trying to do is to make their quarter, right? And it's becoming, as a customer, it is becoming frustrating, right? Because I don't want to be sold to. I want someone that's going to help me solve problems, right? And deliver solutions to my customers. Right. So you're, if you just get a lot of, lot of different storage infrastructure, but NetApp is, is a primary yeah. supplier of yours. Yeah, it's still very big in our environment. We just had NetApp on with Veeam and they were talking about their relationship. What, as a customer, how do you find the relationship between Veeam and NetApp? Is there tangible value that you see in that working relationship? How do you interact with those two oh, companies? Oh, of course there's tangible value, right? So. Um, so we're an enterprise customer, right? So, and as we scaled within our environment, we, we, we came into a bottleneck between Veeam and NetApp, right? And you know, all we had to do was basically expose it to both companies and they worked together to resolve the issue, mm. right? And you know, I believe it was version nine, they finally released a, a fix for it, but you know, that's been the experience is, you know, the, the work that happens behind the scenes, you know, we're, you know, we're not exposed to that but it, it always creates a positive experience for us in the end. We had Dave Russell on earlier from, from Gartner and he was talking about pricing and licensing and, s and specifically socket-based yeah. pricing and he said that that had a big impact on the marketplace. From a customer standpoint, what can you share with us about you know, licensing, pricing, strategies that you employ and maybe advice for other customers? So I, I think a lot of vendors are starting to try to simplify their licensing, right? Because if you look, you know, I'm not going to pick on anyone specific, but they had, you know, okay, well, we're going to sell you a number of VMs and then the storage on top of that. And, you know, and it's like, okay, you, that doesn't make sense, right? I don't want a PhD in math to be able to calculate how much I'm going to spend for licensing, right? So give me a model that is easy to manage and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know exactly what my cost is and have you know a very predictable cost going forward, right? So and, and I understand Veeam is you know has a couple different models, but they're still very simple, right? So you either subscription or your socket, right? So to me, it just keep it simple. What's right? your preference? Uh, right now, it's socket. Uh -huh. However, I'm not opposed to looking at something different um, if it makes sense for my clients. I'm perfectly fine with it. Does that have an effect when you when you go subscription? Does that have an effect? I mean, does your CFO like that because it's well, you, to a we're just basically or? turning operation or capital into operational, right? So, right. Um, you know, and as long as my base cost doesn't change, right? So I, I think it's perfectly fine. So from a capital budget standpoint, it's got to be neutral, and then yeah. you go from there. Uh, Excellent. All right, Mario. Thanks for coming on the cube. Great, great insights. As thank always. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. Yeah. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is the cube. Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.